Hey YouTube, what is going on? It's Adam here with Retro Repairs. It is October, it is cold outside, it's snowing outside, and it is time for another video. I know it's been quite a while that I've since I've made a video here, so um, I mean now that it's getting to be fall and arguably winter, it's time to get back at it. So what I've got here is this Game Boy Advance that I recently did a video on with the shell swap. And by the way, I still have the second shell that I was going to give away to a viewer. Um, everyone that I've commented on in the last video did not message me back. So if you want this wood grain shell, um, I'm going to do a one day only giveaway. So today only check the description for the date that I post this, but I need you to comment wood shell and I will randomly choose someone today to win this. I will contact, I will comment on your comment. You need to respond to me and you need to email me and I will send you this Game Boy Advance shell. Um, but anyways, check the description for more details. Back to this. So I have this Game Boy, which I've modded already with the replacement shell and the replacement buttons, but I've got another little mod that I want to do to it. And this mod is called the Power Up Advance. Um, now this is one of several different battery mods that are available for the Game Boy Advance. This is a little bit older one, and unfortunately they don't make this anymore, but I still wanted to do a video on it. I've been sitting on this for a while. I just really haven't had the time and the, uh, the opportunity to install this. So this I actually ordered from my friends over at handheldlegend.com. Excellent site if you want to check out some, uh, check out some modifications or some shells, any type of replacement parts for handheld devices. They have a great selection and use the referral code that I post in the comments and you'll get 10% off your first order as a new customer. So handheldlegend.com. Anyways, back to this. So Power Up Advance V2. Now what is the Power Up Advance? Well, it's a rechargeable battery, kind of like a cell phone battery. Well, pretty much exactly like a cell phone battery. And that saves you from having to power through AA batteries all the time on these. So what we've got here, little battery pack. It's a small, what is it? 1700 milliamp hour battery. So it's actually not that small, um, but form factor is fairly small. A little uh, rechargeable lithium ion battery. And then we've got this board, the power up advanced board. So I'm gonna open this up. It's actually sealed in there fairly well. Let's see what it is that we've got here. So yeah, just a little board. It uses USB Type-C. Um, and then it's got your various little array of resistors, transistors. Oh, those are LEDs. Doesn't matter. It connects basically, long story short, connects to a rechargeable battery let's use a rechargeable battery in your Game Boy Advance so let's get right to it so what I'm going to do open this up take out those AA batteries now the nice thing about this mod is I believe it's a somewhat reversible mod so you do have to make some modifications to the battery bay here but I believe that you can go back to using the AA's if you wanted to if you wanted to take this mod out um We'll confirm that at the end of this, though. I want to make sure that that's actually the case. So you can do it without even opening this up, but I want to just remove the back shell so that way if any little plastic bits fall in here, I can easily pick them out and uh, it'll be fine. So let's get my tri-wing screwdriver. That is a Phillips screwdriver. Where are you, tri-wing? Here we are. and just remove this back shell. I'm gonna speed through that since I'm sure you know what screwdrivers look like. All right, screws are removed. So this back shell lifts straight up and just gonna place this up to the side. I'm not gonna do anything with the front of that. Flip this over, get those screws out so they don't go missing and just put those screws over to the side here. 
All right, so what we need to do is we need to trim this shell a little bit. And what we need to remove here, basically we need to get this battery to fit. Um, we need to take out this battery terminal here. So get yourself a small little slotted screwdriver. And then there's a tab in here where you can release the battery. There we go. So those terminals are out. You don't have to worry about the other one because it's part of the main board and you really shouldn't take those out. Otherwise, could have more issues. So let's put my screwdrivers off to the side. So now what we need to do is we're going to trim the battery compartment. So get yourself some flush cutters. Now these are nice as they make a nice flat cut and they're a little angled so that you can get in there and trim out what you need. So I'm going to take off this guy right there in the middle. You want this to be as flat as possible and it's not a bad idea if you can't get it perfectly flat. Come back with a file and just remove any sharp edges as you do not want to accidentally puncture this battery. Lithium ion batteries, I think it's lithium ion. Anyways, um, they can be dangerous and puncturing them is how you start fires and blow up cell phones. So you definitely don't want to do that. All right, take my battery, check out the sizing here. So it's a little bit too long on this post on the right side. So we need to trim that back a tiny bit. I'm going to go back to about here. I'm going to take a little bit up at, off at a time, try and measure it, and trim more if necessary. Remember, you can always trim more off, but you can't put it back. Okay, that seems all right. I think we are good there. Okay, so now that that's in, I'm gonna take the battery out and adhere it into place. So again, just checking that for sharp ends. Maybe we can make that slightly. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so the battery might that you have might come with some adhesive on it. So if it does, peel it off and stick it into place. We want to route these wires on the left side of the system and up through the top as that's where the connector is going to be right here. So just so that you're not twisting them everywhere, put that left side in first, get it flat and just give some nice even pressure, sit that into place and it should just hold in nicely. It's not going anywhere. Perfect. So the next part, um, this is going to come with a little, they call it a heat guard. Basically, it's just a spacer, but it is very important as the, the board will give off some heat and it just helps to reduce the case of overheating. So this spacer is going to I believe it sits right into place like this. And I just got to figure out how that stays in place. All right, so what I do need to do is trim this post a little bit more. So now that the battery is in there, you need to be extra careful that you're not gonna puncture the battery. But basically this needs to, this post needs to be trimmed back to be flush with this little wall here. So I'm just gonna trim down a little bit, right like that and then go horizontally and that should be sufficient. 
All right, now that should sit in place just like so. And I believe this just kind of sits there. I don't think there's anything unique or special about it. It doesn't clip into place or anything. I believe it just kind of sits there. All right, so what I believe is the easiest way to go about this now is to put the shell back onto the console because you're gonna need to snap the board into place around those existing battery terminals and it's just easier if those terminals are already in place. So I'm gonna screw this back together, get at least a couple screws in. All right, so that's all back together. I'm gonna put that spacer into place, the heat guard, and then going to install this board. So the board is supposed to go into the left side first and then you snap these clips in place. So these clips kind of snap in around where the, uh, what's it called, the battery terminals connected to the board are. So line them up, push it down, and it should hold it firmly in place. Then this ribbon connector, you line it up, snap it down, and it's good to go. Just curious if there's a charge, if this works. Hey, not too bad. Okay, so that is working. So just out of curiosity, we do have to make a modification to this, but I wanna see how it fits without making this mod. Yeah, not quite. You see it's pushing down, it doesn't quite close. So we want to be able to expose this charging port so that we can just plug it into the bottom of this and be good to go. All right, so what we need to do, we need to cut a notch out right about here. Going up, it's supposed to go up nine millimeters and over 11 millimeters. So what I'm going to do is just kind of get a rough idea where it needs to be. So right on that corner here, I'm gonna make my cuts a little smaller. So I'm gonna do them low and probably a little too narrow and then take off just a tiny bit more as I need it. So if I'm gonna get my left and right, It's going to go up to about here. So for this, what I'm going to start with is just your basic old precision craft hobby knife set. Um, I want to send a shout out to John in Kentucky. John in Kentucky is a viewer and he, he messaged me a number of months ago and said he wanted to send me some stuff that he thinks that I can make use of. He noted that I didn't really have a suitable knife for this and said, hey, you need a knife. He sent me some other stuff too, which is going to be super useful. So I um, want to thank you, John, in Kentucky for the donations to the channel. They will be very much appreciated. Okay, so I'm going to use the old hobby knife. Put the rest of this just over to the side. And the reason I'm using this knife is I want to get a little bit of a, a little bit of a cut, a little line in place so that when I use my flush cutters to actually cut into it. Um, the idea being it's not going to crack where it's not supposed to. If this is going to have pieces break off, I want it to be a controlled crack. So I'm going to have to clean that up still, but that gives you a rough idea of how that's going to look. And yeah, so that's not tall enough. So I need to trim more.
Okay, so still slightly too thick, but it's close. That is very thick. All right. But it's also not wide enough either. So I need to make this slightly wider up at the top here. So I'm going to make my mark at the bottom of this port. Now you might be wondering why did I do a hole all the way from the bottom and up? Um, I'm simply following the guide for, that was provided. If you know for sure your clearance is and you are, you have the tools to make a hole in the middle and make it clean, then absolutely, probably just cutting one right here would be the best way and leaving this piece at the bottom. Um, I don't know 100% the clearances here. I feel this is very high up on the battery compartment. Oh, I'll just try and clean this out a little bit and see how that goes. So I'm going to speed through some of this. Okay, so that is cut out, certainly not the cleanest, and I'm not really a fan of how that actually looks at all. So if I were to do this again, I would try and, I think, maybe drill through the middle here and get an actual proper fit where we keep that bottom into place. Um, but it's a learning lesson for next time. So... I think what I need to do is plug this in and make sure that it works. Okay, so what I've got here is micro, or not a micro, a USB type C, and we've got the Game Boy Advance that I just modded, and we've got my repair shop dog. Hey, Kona, you want your ball? No, not in a playful mood. Oh, well. All right, so let's try this out. And so we have our charging light, so that is good. Um, there is another mod that you can make where you can drill a hole through here so that you can see the light. Um, I didn't buy a light pipe, so it won't look the best. Um, but, I mean, you could always take it off if you wanted to see that it works. But let's plug it in with the battery cover turned on. Or not turned on, but installed. I want to make sure that this actually, this hole is going to work. Yep. Seems to do the trick, and you can even see it kind of shining through the battery cover here. So, I mean, that works great. Let's see, can we play it while it's on? Or charge it while it's on? We sure can. Does that light do anything different? No, it does not. But there we have it. So that's a relatively easy mod to add a rechargeable battery to your Game Boy Advance. Now, um, the kits aren't the cheapest things in the world, but I mean, they're cool. It's nice to have that rechargeable battery to it. Uh, I'm just going off memory. I can't say for sure. I want to say this whole thing with the battery might have been about 40 bucks. Um, so like I said, certainly not cheap per se, but it's not bad for what you're getting. 
Um, you get the ability to charge it using micro or a USB type C. I think they also make a micro USB version of that as well. But um, obviously the one I have here is USB C. But it's supposed to give you 16 hours of playing time. Um, now if you've modded it in other ways, so maybe put in a sound amp or a backlit screen, that'll be less. But um, it should give you a better runtime than a couple of these. Um, I guess the downside, of course, is if you're on the road and you run out of batteries, you can't just put in some more double A's. You've got to find some way to charge this. But, I mean, a lot of people might carry a uh, battery or a cell phone, like portable charger now. So that would work with this as well. Um, but that's going to be it for this video. So hopefully you found it interesting. And um, if you're wanting to install something like this, you might be able to make use of... Um, how I've done it and do that for yourself. So I want to thank you a lot for watching. Uh, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that bell so you get notifications next time I release a video. I'm going to be trying to do uh, them a little bit more often now that we're back into fall and winter. So stay tuned for the next video. And like I said, make sure you comment below. Say the words wood shell as part of your comments. You'll be entered for the draw, which I'm going to draw tonight. So at some point tonight, I'm not committing to a time. I'm going to just pick a name at random. I'm going to comment on your comments, so make sure you're paying attention to your notifications. You have 24 hours to respond, and if you do not respond, I'm going to move on and pick someone else. So thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next video.